Welcome back to the channel. My name is Dave. I'm a pharmacist and today we're talking about the health benefits of ginger. So sit back, maybe have some ginger tea settled in while we go over this very important information. So I'm not going to be talking about myths or theories. This information is derived from the gold standard for medical evidence, randomized controlled trials. I've pulled 13 of these studies from PubMed, and that's what this whole presentation is based on. In each of the studies, the experimental group received one to three grams of dried ginger powder daily, usually in divided doses spread out over two, three, four doses each day for eight to 12 weeks. So I want to point out we are not looking at the long-term impact or the long-term safety profile of consuming this level of ginger because one to three grams of dried ginger powder is quite a lot. That's a large dose. Um, if you're looking at a fresh ginger root, a large part of the mass of that root is going to be water. So if you dry that and then uh, grind it into a powder, put it in a capsule, you're looking at what could be described as a mega dose or at least a very large dose of ginger and that's not something that's really practical to take long term and also not necessarily safe i'm not a big supplement person the supplement industry is notoriously shady there are things that could be in the capsule that you don't expect like heavy metals also the dose that's displayed on the label often does not match the dose in the capsule. So I generally try to avoid supplements, um, but that's the information we have to work with here, at least to get an idea for what ginger is capable of. So the number one trend that emerged from these 13 studies was glucose metabolism. I'm going to elaborate on this, but here's why this is important. 50% of U.S. adults have diabetes or prediabetes. Basically, you could say one in two Americans suffers from metabolic dysfunction to varying degrees, right? 12% of Americans have diabetes, 38% have prediabetes. They're on their way to developing diabetes. That's not good. These 10 studies, so remember I said I looked at 13 studies, 10 of the 13 studies observed fasting blood glucose levels before and after the 8 to 12 weeks of ginger supplementation, and they found a decrease in fasting blood glucose levels. And it wasn't just the blood glucose that they looked at. There were other signs that metabolic health improved. Serum insulin levels decreased. Also, insulin resistance decreased, and insulin sensitivity went up. Now, not every study uh, examined all of those factors, but those were trends that I saw which were very obvious. So that's a very good thing. Now, I want to point out one other thing. The decrease in fasting blood glucose was not tremendous. It was a slight but significant decrease. And when I say significant, I mean statistically significant. In most cases, uh, the average was right around 8 milligrams per deciliter decrease. In one case, the fasting blood glucose level went down only one milligram per deciliter. That was not a statistically significant decrease, but it was a decrease and that supported the overall trend of a decrease in fasting blood glucose levels. Number two, weight loss. So this was another trend that emerged and I saw this uh, play out across five studies. And why does this matter? Well, the answer to that is obvious. About 69% of US adults are overweight or obese. Specifically, 33% are categorized as overweight and 36% more are obese. So if you are not overweight or obese, you are in the 31%. You are a minority in the United States. So that's a problem. And ginger appears to provide some weight loss benefit. As with fasting blood glucose and other things we're going to cover here, the decrease was not tremendous, but it was detectable. There was a trend. Uh, so these five studies, we see weight decreased. And on average, I would say the weight loss uh, in the ginger supplement group 
was about one pound after that eight to 12 week period of supplementation. So not huge, but consistent. Number three, inflammation. Uh, why do we care about inflammation? More than 50% of all deaths are attributed to chronic inflammatory diseases. So anything we can do to attenuate that inflammation is going to be good. And ginger seems to do that. Here, again, out of those 13 studies I looked at, these five studies measured something called high-sensitivity C-reactive protein, which is a marker of inflammation. And as with everything else, it wasn't a tremendous decrease, but there was a decrease, and it was consistent across studies. Um, here are my references. Like I said, these are the 13 randomized controlled trials that I reviewed, and I will have these in the description below as well if you'd like to look these up on your own. Now, when it comes to the ginger supplements, I, I wanted to illustrate the importance of getting ginger in your diet as opposed to getting ginger from a supplement. Uh, like I said, the supplements are usually junk. They can have heavy metals. They can have mislabeled doses. Um, several studies have demonstrated these things in various ways. It's very well documented. The supplement industry is best avoided. Also, since the ginger is so highly concentrated in supplement form, um, it's important to note that high doses of ginger can increase your risk of bleeding, particularly if you're taking a blood thinner, for instance, aspirin, warfarin, Plavix, there are a number of other ones, anything that's anticoagulant or antiplatelet. So that could be a risk and uh, another reason to steer clear of the supplements. But you can enjoy the benefits of ginger without supplements. Um, ginger tea is one way to do that. And you can buy that in the store or you can make your own. And there are tons of recipes across the internet for how to make your own ginger tea. And you can integrate other things into that as well if you'd like. Things like turmeric and lemon um, to change the flavor. Also honey can be added, although I don't recommend that because that's added sugar. Furthermore, ginger can be used in cooking. You can integrate it into a smoothie with fruit and that'll mask the taste if you don't like the taste. Alternatively, you can use it in soups like lentil soup or split pea soup, and that will enhance the flavor. Uh, but there are a number of ways you can use ginger and get these benefits without taking a supplement. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.